We found it using a magnetometer in the end. It took us three years. We dived. We used ordinary diver searches. We searched in a, a big box uh, after we had done all the research. But don't forget, we spent also two years researching her in the archives to try and find the clues where to start. You're looking very often through thousands of documents or papers, literally thousands, with writing you can hardly decipher, sometimes in Latin, sometimes in French or Dutch, sometimes written on, on torn or tattered or rat-eaten paper. And you follow everything up like it. You really become, in a sense, a historical detective. Then we carried out diver searching all over the area, that the box that we made. We didn't find it. We started to use early technology and to, uh, um, and, and to uh, research into the technology so that we could use it. Uh, land, so we could use land magnetometers. And we found it with a magnetometer. And it was the first big shipwreck that had been found using a uh, magnetometer. The, the raw material, the VOC ships, you know, their remains are found by explorers, sometimes by amateurs, sometimes by university people, you know, in teams, and some, sometimes by what you might call commercial people. Commercial people are merely the people who actually pay for it themselves instead of an institution or a government paying for it. find a ship twice. You find it either first on paper and then under the sea, or else you find a ship once. You find it either on paper or under the sea. And I found many, many wrecks, wonderful, colorful, rich wrecks on paper. The binding of the ship is the bones of it for me. I think for the divers, it's underneath. What they find and what they see underneath is everything. As I don't dive, I don't have this feeling as well. And they are much less interested in the paper and the story and the romance. 